this day that we have, alhamdulillah, we used to have kind of intensive academic course. When, and when it comes to that, to that course, it, and it's related to that, how to study the, the Quranic method, the Quranic way, the Quranic pattern. And alhamdulillah, we started talking about some of the pattern in the Quran, and we started to get to know more about the Quranic interpretations and also the different schools related to the Quranic interpretation. And also when it comes to the, the reality, we started to, to study some of the issues related to the surahs, the chapters of the Quran. So we get to know what is the main theme of each surah, particularly not, not even to have a comprehensive knowledge about each surah, because it, it is something so difficult to cover every point in the surah in just one lecture, which will be like, even if it was one hour, because we are talking about the surahs at the beginning of the Quran, we call them up to while, the longest surahs. And alhamdulillah, we started to have like a keyword for each surah. And from that keyword, we get to know about the main theme of each surah. And for instance, we spoke about Surah Al-Baqarah. What is the keyword for Surah Al-Baqarah? So how to have the khilafah, how to be a good servant to Allah on earth. And we spoke about Surah Al-Fatiha as a contract between you and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Surah Al-Imran, which is how to how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala chose certain servants to give them his message and to give them the, 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 the revelation of Allah from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And we spoke about Surah Al-Nisa, and actually the key word of Surah Al-Nisa was Al-Ahkam, the rules related to women, the rules related to inheritance, the rules related to the family, the, 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 the affairs of the Muslim family in large. And today, inshallah, we are going to discuss Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number five. And Surah Al-Ma'idah, actually, it is one of the, 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 the longest surahs in the Quran, as we count Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Ma'idah, Al-An'am, Al-A'raf, Al-Anfal, so we are talking about the surahs, which are the longest surahs in the Quran. Surah Al-Ma'idah, one of them. But let me tell you about the chronological sequence that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed the, 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 those surahs in. We can find also that Surah Al-Ma'idah is in Madani Surah. So we have Al-Baqarah, Al-Imran, Al-Nisa, Al-Ma'idah are Madani Surahs. But Al-Baqarah was revealed at the beginning of the revelation. So Ali Imran and the Nisa, Ali Imran and the Nisa was in the middle of the Madani time. I mean, after the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Surah Al-Ma'idah, actually one of the latest, one of the latest of the revelation. It revealed mostly at, at the end of the revelation. We call it one of the latest finishing touching of the Sharia. Ah. One of the latest finishing touching of the Sharia. Ah. As you know, when you build any, like when you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this pattern in the Quran, and why Allah started by Al-Baqarah, basically because Al-Baqarah speaks about how to be a good servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it speaks about the doctrine, speaks about the aqidah, how to single Allah out with your worship. And it does not have lots of the rules with the exception of the talaq and divorce. But when it comes to the, the surah al-ma'idah, and it is the finishing touching of the sharia ah because it has lots of ahkam. So the key word for Surah Al-Ma'idah, we can consider it as halal and haram. What is halal and what is haram? What is halal related to the food? What is halal related to the dealings? What is halal related to hunting? What is halal uh, or, or haram when it comes to murdering or killing innocent person. So it has lots of rules. That is why, remember this word very well, it is the finishing touching of the Sharia. Ah. This is Surah Al-Ma'idah mostly is all about. And when it comes to this Surah, 
the Surah Al-Ma'idah was revealed after Surah Al-Fatih. And it has that verse that most of it, most of Muslims, subhanAllah, like almost, you know, 70% of Muslims, they consider this verse is the last of the revelation, which is Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Wa Atmamtu Alaykum Ni'mati. As Allah said, today I have perfected my re your religion and I have gave you all my favors and I, you know, bestowed my favors upon you. Most of Muslims, unfortunately, they consider this verse the last revelation. And we spoke about this before that the last revelation in is the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Wattaqu yawman turja'una fihi ila Allah." Be conscious of the day that you will return back to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And basically, one of the of the Jews, one of the Jewish community members at the time of. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an in al Madina was talking with him and he said, you know, Umar, that you have a verse in the Quran. If it was revealed upon us as Jews, we will consider that day as the day of Eid, as a Eid day. And he said, what's this ayah? He said, al yawma akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today I have perfected your religion. And one of the things, I, I don't want to raise lots of issues today because we have very important issue related to the halal and haram meat. But I, I wanted to tell you something about, about this verse. Today I have perfected your religion. That does not mean literally the concept of religion because lots of people, they try to take the advantage and they try to, to trick people's minds when it comes to that word, today I have perfected, that means you had shortcomings. That means your religion wasn't perfect. And at that day, Allah perfected the religion. No, the meaning here means Allah said, wanted to say, today I have completed the rules of the Sharia, the laws of Islam. So it will be applicable. It will be you know, it will come to be like, it will come to be affected on that day. That day that I have perfected the rules of the Sharia, the laws, but the concept of Islam as a religion itself, it's, it's from the day one, the day that Allah created his creation, it's perfect, it's perfect, it's there. We didn't want to find or to wait that day to get our religion perfected. So Allah is talking not about the deen as essence, as the core of the deen, which is the oneness of Allah, but Allah was talking about the Sharia, ah, the rules of the Sharia. Ah. And one of the information that I wanted you to, to stick with, Surah Al-Ma'idah have how many verses in Surah Al-Ma'idah? 120 verses. And how many words in Surah Al-Ma'idah? 2,837 words in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Again, 2,837 words in Surah Al-Ma'idah. How many letters in Surah Al-Ma'idah? 11,892 letters in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Again, 11,892 letters in Surah Al-Ma'idah. As we mentioned, revealed after Surah Al -Fatih. And one of the issues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about in the surah, and we need as Muslims, we need to learn what is the first verse in the surah, Surah Al Ma'idah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the believers. As I told you, it talks about the sharia. Ah. So when we say sharia, ah, halal and haram, Allah will not address the humanity. Allah will not say, Ya ayyuhan nas, all people. No, but Allah addressed the believers when he said, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu awfu bil uqud. All you who believe fulfill the contracts. And just in, in, in this statement, in this verse, we can learn a lot when it comes to fulfill the contracts. What does it mean? What are the types of contracts that we have? It's a general expression when it comes to uqud. We have many aspects in 
contracts, your marriage, your marriage contract. You need to fulfill the duties of that marriage. You need to fulfill the duties of the buying and selling contracts. If you are renting, if you are living in the USA and you have something with the immigration like the citizenship, it has contracts, it has rules. You must stick with the rules and do not betray these rules. Once you came to the country and once you start to live with the rules of the country, with the laws of the country, you have to stick with these laws. And you as a Muslim, and when it comes to the, the contracts, we think that because we, we are in a non-Muslim country, like with that expression nowadays, we think that it is halal to betray the contract. No, which is not halal at all. You as a Muslim who have this statement, fulfill the contracts, the contracts of the citizenship, the contracts of the green cards, the contracts of the law, you admitted yourself to obey and to follow the law here. Even your driving license, it has law. Something what we call it unspoken norms. Even in the masjid, in the masjid, we have certain lines we cannot cross. I, as Imam, we have uqud, we have agreements, we have contracts. I cannot cross the lines of contracts between me and my brothers. Every Muslim has kind, has lots of uqud in his life. With your neighbors, you have contract. What well, we call it unspoken norms. The social contract in the street, the social contract between you and your neighbors, you have certain limits you cannot cross. So we as Muslims, we should fulfill the contracts. And this is what Allah addressed at the first verse in the surah. And of course, one of the most important contracts in your life as a Muslim, the contract between you and Allah, the contract between you and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So we cannot imagine a Muslim, and, and that, that is the thing that I wanted to, to deal with. We, when, we, when we have a person who always violates his contract, is the, the contracts like someone dealing or treating his wife bad. Someone is betraying his people in the work. Someone, you know, stealing and, 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 and cheating in his work, does not have amana in his work. So automatically you will understand that that, that person has no relationship, has no good relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has a problem in fulfilling the duties of the contracts in large. That tells you about this personality. That tells you if somebody you have in salah, the salah between you and Allah is a contract. So you need to fulfill the contracts in general, in general. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to talk about the halal and the haram concept. And here I wanted to pause a little bit to talk about the, 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 the issue of the halal and the haram. And when it comes to the halal and the haram, it has lots of details. And we are not talking here about fiqh rules, but we need to learn as Muslims, what is halal and what is haram? One of the issues that Allah addressed in the surah that it's prohibited to drink wine, to drink alcohol, to eat the dead body. And here, we have to understand lots of issues under this title, the, the dead bodies. We are not permitted, we are not allowed to eat the dead bodies. And when it comes to the halal and the haram meat, we have lots of people, they have lots of misconceptions. And actually I'm telling, I'm trying tonight inshallah to take that amana from my shoulder and give it to your shoulders. So I, at least if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me and he told me, you got that position in that message during that time. So why you didn't tell the truth? And I was talking with my brother. I think he, he escaped, you know? So one of the brothers here, I was talking with him about 
before Maghrib that lots of people don't like the truth. Lots of people, when it comes to the truth, they don't, they don't like it. They just keep arguing without even evidence. When it comes to the halal meat, what is the qualities of the halal meat? What are the qualities of the halal meat? So can we share some of the ideas? Yes. To be slaughtered in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do you have any extra answer? Okay, what is the meaning of the word the biha? The biha. To slaughter something that is the biha. So what we are doing in Eid is the biha, okay? But, or it is Qurbani. What's the name? Qurbani or the biha or Udhiyah? Huh? Udhiyah. That's the Shari'i term. That's the Shari'i term that is called Udhiyah. And everything you are slaughtering, even during the time of Eid or after the time of Eid, it is called the biha. So if you had, you know, meat, if you had something and you need to slaughter as the biha, you know, in the proper place, and if you did it today or tomorrow, and still you can say, I had the biha, because the word the biha means something you slaughtered something like the animals you slaughtered. And you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this surah give us the instructions. And as you know, as you know, we have lots of non-Muslims. Other than non-Muslims, they have certain way of eating their food. And they started to spread that word that we know kosher, okay? So everyone now knows what does it mean like kosher. And they started to respect their idea of eating food. And they cannot eat anything except that type of food. And look at, this is the identity. This is how you represent yourself. This is how you are feeling proud of your aqeedah, of your creed and doctrine. But we as Muslims, we have, unfortunately, lots of Muslims, lots of Muslims, they don't stick with that term, which is halal. What does it mean? And what makes the biha or what makes anything halal or haram? Let's agree on certain terms. We have two types or two conditions. First of all, it has to be the type of the animal has to be halal, has to be halal, cows, goats, Sheep, camels, what else? Chicken, Chicken Rabbit. deers, Rabbit. rabbits. Okay, so can 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 you eat bear? Bear. Beer, you cannot eat beer. No, we are talking about the animals that we slaughter, not seafood. I know you like the seafood, like me. Okay. But that's not our issue tonight. We are talking about the types of animals. So it has to be halal, number one. Number two, when you slaughter, you do it on the name of Allah. You mention Allah's name. And again, it has to be slaughtered. So other than slaughtering, we call it dead animal. So if somebody with the electric shot or, or with hammer, he knocked the, the, he knocked the animal down or with the gun, he shoot the animal. Is that called the biha? So with the consensus of the scholars, 100% it is haram to eat. Is that clear? So that's not that's not dead animal. If you shot and still has the soul in it, then you slaughtered. Then it's it is called slaughtering. But I'm talking about the way that you kill the animal. If it was killed 
by hammer, electric, ca electric cable, or shoot, or something. So don't say, don't say, you know what? We have lots of people, they take the advantage of this verse and they don't understand the meaning. They said, Imam, Allah said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, this Surah, الْيَوْمَ أُحِلَّ لَكُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَطَعَامُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ حِلُّ لَكُمْ And the food of the people of the book is halal for you. Okay? So what Allah meant by this ta'am? Because ta'am is a generic, generic, generic word. It can be fruits, like bread, all the types of food. But can I say that ta'amu al-lazina utul kitab, the food of the people of the book is halal. Can I say that everything comes from the people of the book is halal, even if it was pork? No. So what about if what I have from the people of the book is a dead animal? Can I eat it? So we have lots of people, they know very well. It's a dead animal. Like you can find the chicken, the whole neck is good. No, no sign or no mark for slaughtering, okay? And he buys it and still he eats. And you know what? He says, you know, Imam, because we are under the rule of necessity. And number two, we can say Bismillah. I can tell you tonight, Bismillah will not make the dead animal halal. Not even Bismillah. Wallahi, if you have recited the entire Quran, it will not be halal. Number two, when you do something like this and you eat, you don't have necessity. What's the rule of necessity is? Someone cannot find. Nowadays, you can, you can purchase anything online. You can buy anything online. So there is no need to talk with me about necessity. That everything, alhamdulillah, is available. And you are not going to die. We are, we are talking about someone is dying and he has nothing to eat like someone in the desert. He has nothing to eat except the dead meat or the dead animal meat. So that, that's not the, the case here in our communities. Uh, that's number one. Number two, what about if they slaughtered the non-Muslim? slaughtered the animal. Can I eat it? Yes. yes, you can eat. But what about mentioning the name of Allah? It's another case. But Islam told you, based on this verse, you can eat, but not on the regular basis. Not to make it as your routine. If your neighbor invited you, and then the default, the default that Islam told us, like as I told you, when you go to a Muslim, don't doubt him. Don't say, brother, is that halal? Is that halal? That's embarrassment. You know, don't, don't do this. That's not the behavior of the Muslim. But if a non-Muslim invited you, Islam told you it is halal to eat it is because the default that according to their teachings on their books that they slaughter, okay? That they slaughter. So the default that you can eat, no problem. But don't make it as a regular basis. That's number one. Number two, if you are sure 100% that it was killed by shooting, by electric, by anything else, drowning. Do not eat at all. Do not eat at all. That's not halal. But if you know that they slaughtered, 
And that's the default, by the way. Even if they didn't mention the name of Allah, and that is a special case for them, just if you were invited, not your regular basis, not your regular life, not to eat every day from that source. And if you are a Muslim who is stick with his deen, you have to have caution. You have to be aware of what you are eating to please Allah. Do not eat haram and say, you know what? I will just say Bismillah and eat. I'm saying that for the sake of Allah because you are responsible. Look at what you are feeding your children. We have other, other than non-Muslim, other than Muslims, they proud. You know how to, you know the process, how to make the food kosher? It's long process, but yet, yet they stick with the, with the tradition and the teachings of the religion. What about us as Muslims? We take it easy. I stop by any, by any place. Then I eat from anything. I don't care. Just say Bismillah and look at this piece of meat. It's a dead animal, okay? And this is the magic of Bismillah. It's a dead animal. Once you say Bismillah, it will flip it to halal. And that's their concept. I tell you, if you recited the entire Quran, it will not flip it to be halal. What's the, what's the original rule that we eat only from the bi'a? Number two, from what Allah's name was mentioned during the time of the bi'a. And you can raise lots of issues. That what about if we have a place the people are claiming that this is the bi'a, but they are not doing this but they just put the stamp of halal, but they just put the slogan of halal. If you are 100% sure that they fabricated the logo and they did not make it halal, don't eat, don't eat. This surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, and please read the surah carefully. This surah is related to the, what is halal and the haram to eat. We have lots of people, they know, you know, they go to any public stores to get whatever they want. And you know what? Say just Bismillah. And let me tell you frankly, that maybe, maybe, but not in the dead animal. That exception, not related to the dead animal because no one, no one can tell you that the dead animal is halal. No one will tell you this, but maybe like 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when Dr. Yusuf came, when Dr. Rahim came, maybe in the early days, you know, maybe to like 20, 30, 40 years ago, that you cannot find the halal at all. Unless if you have three, four, five persons, they collect money, they bring their, their zabiha and they do it by themselves or something. It was so difficult to get the halal. There was no mean to get the halal at that time. At that time, the scholars gave the exception to those people 40 years ago that if you did not find and if they slaughtered the chicken or the cow, even the one who slaughtered what was a non-Muslim, you can say Bismillah and eat. That was in the past. But unless, but as long as you have the halal available, there is no excuse at all. As long as it is available online, you can get it. There is no excuse to eat from anywhere else and say Bismillah. No, it's not halal. So that's my message to everyone. Read Surah Al-Ma'idah. It will tell you more about that concept, inshallah. 
بارك الله فيك سيستر may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no uh, بارك الله فيك brother Zach yes sister Ruby it's, it's so important topic it's so much important topic that each family each Muslim family at least in our community in the Uporichi community because I wanted to deliver the message and I wish if my voice can reach to each house that I'm moving that from my shoulder to your shoulder, maybe because you didn't have the knowledge. Yes, but once you get the knowledge, خلاص. once you get it, Allah will ask you about everything that you are doing. Jazakumullahu khairan. Yeah, we can, yes. Jazakumullahu khairan, Sister Abida, may Allah bless you. Allahumma amin ya rabbal alameen. But also the, the lecture will be there so anyone can watch it on YouTube. So this is the case. That is this. That is Surat al-Ma'idah is about. I know we have lots of things to deal with. Uh, it's so, so difficult to finish all the points in this short time. Surat al-Ma'idah talked about the rules of hunting. <laughs> For those people who are hunting here in Florida, and they have the license and they, they have their guns and so they hunt deers or something. They need to read the rules of hunting. It talks about also the rules of Hajj and what's the meaning of Surat Al-Ma'idah. Do you know Al-Ma'idah, the, mean, the meaning? The table, okay? The dining table. The word Ma'idah, not any table. Table can be the table that I'm using for, the, for my laptop here. The table can, can be the table that your child used to study in. But the table in this surah means the dining table. Because Sayyiduna Isa, the Prophet Jesus, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said, Allahumma rabbana anzil alayna ma'idatan min as sama takunu lana eidan li awwalina wa akhirina wa ayatan minka warzukna wa anta khayru raziqeen. Sayyiduna Isa asked Allah because his people asked him. And they said, yes. They wanted the food only. Yes. <laughs> they, they wanted the dinner and the food comes from the heavens, which is the last supper, as we know in the Bible. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them by giving them the food from the heavens. And it was the last supper. It has lots of discussion whether in the Bible or even in the Quran. Allah wanted to mention the surah to tell the people of the book that don't think Islam is neglecting your history. Don't think that Islam is neglecting your biography, but Islam knows everything about what you have. Islam knows what it, what was, what, what is the request of Jesus from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Surah Al-Ma'idah also is talking about the pillars of wudu and the rules of tayammum in case that you didn't find the water or you, was, you wasn't able to use that water, whether it was a very cold night or you have something else like a surgery or something in, in like rocking in your leg or in your hand. Allah is talking about all these rules in Surah Al-Ma'idah. These are the themes of the Surah. Allah is talking about the pillars of wudu. I remember when first, when I came to the masjid, I think in, in 2018, so you can see that we, we had that term and, and we have people, you know, they didn't like that term, quick wudu, okay? <laughs> Dr. Rahim remembers. The short wudu, what does it mean? Is to fulfill just the pillars of wudu. Just the pillars of wudu. And we give the scenario. That imagine if we have a person who does not have enough water to make long or, or perfect, complete wudu. Can he make that short wudu? We said yes. He can make it. Somebody, you know, has just little, little amount of, of water and he just have it. 
and he's in a car in, in his plane or in a certain place, he's in the airport, he's just, or somebody stuck in the road and he wanted to make wudu. And I remember when I was in Masjid al khif in the time of Al-Hajj, after we finished the Arafah, so you are in the Masjid and the, for those people who went to Hajj, you know, what does it mean to go to the bathroom to make wudu over there? You know, it take, maybe it takes like three hours to make wudu and come back in, in that crowdness. Brother Abdel Basit is... <laughs> yes, 3.30 in the morning to wake up just to catch, to make wudu. So we, we used to have like, like small bottles of water, water and we used to make that short wudu. What does it mean? Allah said, the short will do, and again, again, don't take, take it from me as a rule and say, Imam said, make the short will do every, every day and go. Be aware, I just said, in certain conditions, under certain circumstances, you can make it just if you fulfilled the pillars, you are good to pray. You are good to pray under certain circumstances. If you have the intention, because your intention is one of the pillars. Number two, if you washed your face, Allah started by the face, but silu, would you happen? If you washed your face one time, then your hands up to the elbows, one time, both hands, and then if you wiped, your hair or part of your hair once which is in normal times it is once but sometimes we talk about the sunnah is to cover all the hair if you if you just got part of the hair you know as as just once okay so silly would you happen your face your your hands to the elbows once wipe the part and then to wash your feet just once. If you did so, you are good to pray. You are good to pray. That is what we call it in the Sharia, ah, the short wudu. But as I mentioned, not every time. Yes, we need to make the sunnah. We need to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I need you to recite this verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah when Allah talks about the pillars of wudu. Other than this, it will be the sunnah of wudu, insha'Allah. Jazakumullahu khaira for having that patience to listen to me that long lecture. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Um, yes, we, we, we spoke, Brother Fazl, about if it is certified as a halal, yes, it's good to eat even if they have certain like uh, 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 certain talks about certain discussions about whether they play with the logo or not if they have it you can eat and they will be responsible in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if you have if you have certain information that they are not they are cheating people so you as a muslim don't eat don't eat but if you are 100% sure, if you are in doubt, go and eat. No problem at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma gfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana unsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. We have one of our sisters. She is ill uh, and she is related to sister Bibi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her shifa, ya rabbal alameen. We need to make dua to her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her cure and give her shifa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her quick recovery, ya Rabbil Alameen. And we are sending our salam to our sister, sister Bibi, and all the family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you patience. Allahumma ameen, 
Ya Rabbal Alameen, let's make a special dua for her and for every Muslim and Muslima. Let's make dua for everyone is suffering. Let's make dua for everyone is sick. Let's make dua for everyone passed away from the Muslimin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered them with his mercy. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Allahumma laka alhamdu kullu. ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم يا ربنا توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين واحشرنا يا ربنا في زمرة خير المرسلين اللهم أكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعزنا ولا تزلنا وارفعنا ولا تضعنا اللهم وسع أرزاقنا وارزقنا رزقا حلالا طيبا اللهم ارزقنا الحلال وبارك لنا فيه وباعد بيننا وبين الحرام كما باعدت بين المشرق والمغرب وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله